So, so far in the previous videos, we've talked about uh, byte-oriented instruction, we've talked about bed-oriented instruction, we've talked about literal-oriented uh, instruction. Uh, one thing that's common across all of these instructions is, is as, as soon as the instruction is uh, read from the memory and it is being executed, the computers move on, will finish the execution and move on to the next instruction immediately after them. That's great for executing instructions one after the other as they're listed, but once in a while, much like high-level language where we had if then else, while loop, for loop, and other ways, calls and things like that, that we could jump to a specific location in memory, we may want to do, if not may, we do want to do the similar things in assembly language because after all, we have to be able to implement all of those control um, structures here as well. So if you take a look at this uh, table in front of us, which represents the control instruction in its entirety for the PIC micro, we notice that there are, maybe not yet, but after we finish this conversation, uh, you'll know that there are uh, a number, at least three types of instruction embedded in this grouping. One group collectively is the branch instructions from uh, that are listed here. Call kind of stand by itself as a different grouping. And then the last one we're going to talk about is go to. Okay. There are other instructions in here, but they are very specific and special. We talk about that um, uh, in, in, in much later videos when we need to use them for a particular uh, for the particular set. Uh, a couple to talk about really has nothing to do with control, so I'm not exactly sure why they end up in here other than not sure where they end up. These are called no operation. Guess what? If you put that in, nothing happens other than wasting one word and one cycle. And so, so if you if your opcodes if, if you put all zeros in the word, that's going to be assuming it's a no operations. And so, the, so the question is, why in the world would we have an instruction that does nothing? It's usually used in delay. So if you want to delay something for a certain amount of time, you could use no ops to get that, that accomplished. And each no op um, causes one instruction cycle of delay. Now the next question you may ask is, well, why is there two of them? Well, the first one is really the real no op. The second one, this one, if you remember 1111 and the most significant four bits of an instruction indicates a second word in a two word instruction. And they just wanted to make sure, we wanted to make sure that if all of a sudden we are going and looking at a code, we don't start, execu start executing the second word of an instruction. So that's where it comes in. So this is not really a no op, it's just a placeholder for the second byte of a two byte instruction, much like move FF, which we had studied earlier, the first byte, and then there was a second one. And even here, if you look at it, like call instruction is a two word instruction, you see the second word starts with 111. Same thing for go to, go to is a two word instruction, and you see the second one starts with 111. So that's where they come. And if you ever have a machine take, uh, have a computer take a machine code, and, uh, and then uh, disassemble it and tell you, uh, what, uh, or uh, yeah, disassemble it and tell you what the assembly code was, uh, all for all the second line of the two word instruction puts no op in front of them, which uh, which is just a so anyway. So that was a little bit of a side tour. This is in reality not even a control, but just I had to put it in here, so we put it in there. So what are these branches? Branches, as the name implies, instead so instead of just sequentially executing something you can jump from where you are to any, any other location that you prefer. And there are two kinds of branch. One branch is BRA, unconditional branch, which is like a, I don't care what's happening. When I hit this instruction, I'm gonna go where it tells me to go. And then there are branch with conditions. So whatever the condition is, branch if carry, branch if negative, which means 
the la is going to look at the status bit. If the status bit is set, then it's going to take the action that it says. Uh, so, for example, branch carry, if the status for carry is set. So, who sets the status for carry? The last instruction that effective carry sets that button. So, whatever the last instruction before the, uh, uh, before the branch sets the condition which the branch will condition on. So we'll, we'll get into uh, more examples of this in a future, but for now, sufficient to say that, okay, here's an example, I'm gonna subtract the five, or actually later, I better probably should say this as well. This instruction is kind of deceiving because it's not W minus five, but rather it's five minus W. So, and then it's gonna put the result in W, okay? So this instruction is gonna get executed since that's the last instruction in this loop that's being executed um, before uh, branch not zero, this will branch will always occur as long as the result of the last instruction was uh, not zero. As soon as it becomes zero, then uh, stops branching and will execute whatever instruction sits right after here. So this loop will start working as soon as this, this, this operation gives us a zero. Okay, so that's that's branch, and of course we can, if you don't want to branch on non-zero, you can branch on zero, or you can branch if there is a carry, if there is a no carry, or if it's a negative number and all that. And these are literally good enough for us to be able to build most of the if then else conditions, most of the while loop conditions and all of that. So that would be a good exercise for you to see if you can do that. Now, the next item on the list is the branch. Branch is a little bit different, um, not only from the fact that these guys, the regular condition branch only can jump 128 byte before and 128 byte after because this is a two's complement number is positive and negative. So if you wanna jump back, it subtracts the current PC from the size. We'll get to talk about branches a little more in a separate video, but this just wanted to give you an idea. And then, and then the BRA basically is an infinite loop. It really doesn't care what instructions did before it or whatever. It's just gonna branch from here to whatever label you put up here. So it's gonna go back and forth as forever and ever. This is an infinite loop. It will never break out of it because there's no condition that's tested. It's just gonna branch and branch and branch. Now, this branch allows us to go roughly 2K, 2,000 bytes forward, 2,000 bytes backward or thereabout because you are given uh, roughly 11 bits uh, here to work with. Actually, it's gonna go 1,000 forward and 1,000 backward because we had a positive 1,000 and negative 1,000 for a total of 2,000. So you have 11 bits that you can work with on the branch side. So you got a little more distance to go. If you need to jump way down in your program, let's say you got to jump a thousand step forward, uh, or, or I'm sorry, um, 2,000 or 3,000 um, bytes forward in the program memory, or you need to jump back two or 3,000 byte back, uh, you need, you must use go to. And go to instruction is a, is a bigger instruction, is a two word instruction, so it's not as fast as those, that's why they don't use it. Um, and it takes long, well, it takes about the same time, but it takes uh, more memory to store it. Um, so um, in, in um, using this, this allows us to go the full distance. So you can go from anywhere in the memory to anywhere else in the memory. And these Ks are actually the absolute address of words, not bytes, words in the system. So. So they are absolute. You can go from end of the memory to the beginning of the memory, and that would be fine. There's enough, there's enough address here to get you from one end to the other end. And again, we're gonna have a separate item talking about that. Call is very much like, is a function call basically. It's very similar. The call is very similar to uh, go to, with one exception, when you call, when you, execute the code that you jump to and you get a return instruction, you will come back to whatever instruction is after the call. Again, we're not gonna cover the call very much here, 
But in chapter in the videos that cover chapter four, we're going to get in much more detail of how calls work, how the returns work. I just want to mention it so uh, we had an idea of what's going on. So in the next uh, couple of videos, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little more work with branches and being able to figure out where the branch actually going to end up and um, how we write the machine code for them and things like that and we're gonna and then there's one other video that talks about how you go if somebody gives you a go-to instruction how do you de deconstruct that and figure out where the um, where the uh, uh, what the machine code is and if somebody gives you a machine code you can figure out where is it that you're jumping to